Welcome back. We are here with Phyllis Amen. Phyllis has an amazing, amazing background that you are going to love to hear all about. For now, I'm going to tell you that she is the ambassador for conscious aging life management. And our focus today is to talk about mindful longevity solutions. What does it mean to actually evolve a lifestyle that can bring you healthy longevity, quality of life. I don't know, how long do you want to live? Well, let's get you there, happy and healthy. Phyllis, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you so much, Lauren. I really appreciate the opportunity. And um, I'm thrilled that we can talk about this topic, which is so important, especially when there are so many people in our population that are aging. I mean, actually, there are 100 million people over the age of 50. And 60 and um, uh, 10,000 people turning 65 every single day between now and 2034. That is an unbelievable number. And with that size of population, it stands to reason that these conversations are becoming much more popular. I don't remember Remember what you know, maybe I was too young, but even over the last 30 years, I don't remember the conversations around senior support or healthy aging or longevity with quality of life ever being more prominent. So you come from a really varied background. I mean, you're a multi-published author, speaker, coach, trainer, you you really bring everything, but give us a little bit more of your background that brought you to today. Great, thanks for asking. So um, I'm a speech and language pathologist by profession. And I have spent over 40,000 hours. It's, it, it probably is upwards closer to 50, but I'll say over 40,000 working uh, with thousands of families and patients and residents in long, this different long-term care settings. So I come from a place where I've seen uh, the, the other side, I'll say, of the healthy aging situation. And of course, many of those situations are situations that people cannot control. But what finally came to me over time is, what can we be doing to you know, continue aging in a way as healthfully as possible so that we don't wind up there? Um, you know, I have this, uh, uh, I'm a co-author in a book that came out uh, not too long ago. It became a number one Wall Street Journal bestseller uh, called WTF to OMG with a little LOL, Unpacking Life's Hidden Lessons. And my chapter is about how I really came to this besides the 40,000 hours is based on my father's story. He had diabetes. And, um, you know, we always thought he was going to the doctor and he was doing what he was supposed to. And, um, you know, my mother cooked certain foods uh, the way they needed to be cooked for him to accommodate his diabetic diet. Uh, but he thought if he eliminated sugar and potatoes and rice, that was it. And she was always telling him there was much more to it. He really wasn't listening. I could still hear those arguments now. And, um, you know, one day I was, um, it was a spring day, uh, the, mo the Monday before Father's Day, and we were talking and one minute he was talking to me and the next minute he wasn't. Oh. And I was 17 at the time. It really wasn't until much, much later, actually more recently, that it dawned on me that he really didn't take personal responsibility by really doing everything he could have done. Um, and that's kind of how I came to this. We can't just depend on doctors to write prescriptions. I mean, we need them, don't get me wrong, right? And there are many instances where that's so important to our well being. But what can we do for ourselves? What responsibility do we have, not only for ourselves, but to our families, right? And to our loved ones. Absolutely. And there's so many stories like yours. And I'm sorry for that. And I'm always sorry to hear those stories. And then I'm always gratified to see the additional learning and see people who do take responsibility, because ultimately, we have to control what we can. And the rest, the rest, we have to just trust it's going to go as well as it can, right? So tell me how 
how do you advise people? Because that's how you spend your time is helping people come up with strategies for healthy lifestyle and healthy living. So I help them develop what we call a personalized longevity plan, which basically is is a wellness care plan. And uh, because if you ask people, you know, if how long they want to live or to what age they'd like to live, most people would say, uh, maybe, you know, I'd like to live to 100 or 90 or 80. Right. And so, um, yeah, there are strategies to to help yourself so that you can do that. Now, is it going to work all of the time? No, because of course there is, you know, our DNA and our environment and the lifestyle we've had and, and, um, you know, other factors that have, that have influenced that. But in developing a wellness care plan and understanding the, 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 the factors that go into healthy aging. So I, I coach people to develop those. We look at what they're doing now Uh, where they see themselves on a scale, let's say one to 10 in a variety of areas. And then we develop strategies for them to, you know, improve in each of those areas towards a a lifestyle that encourages, I'll say, more wellness. And one of them, we were talking about this uh, before we started, right? Which is about connection. Right. And um, people sometimes, I don't think, realize the importance of social connectedness. It's so important for us emotionally because without that, and we learned that a lot during the pandemic, right? You just kind of wither. And so an important part of that is uh, connections. I'm working with a gentleman right now who doesn't have many connections and we're, you know, we're figuring out a way for him to develop those connections. Um, uh, You know, what can he do uh, with his colleagues at work or what can he do outside of work? Does he have interests or passions that he can pursue uh, that would give him those connections? Um, Another one that I I talk about a lot, which people don't really realize is sleep. So yeah, people pride themselves on, oh, I only need four hours of sleep a night, right? Or five. Do you fall in that category? Not me, not me. I need nine hours or I'm kind of (laughs) useless. Well, that's probably true because that's when our bodies really recover. And so if people, and especially as people get older, sometimes their sleep is interrupted. You know, they need bathroom breaks. I mean, there are different physiologic functions, but if really you need a good eight hours worth of sleep, and if you're not getting that, we develop sleep strategies for you so that you can have a more restful sleep and give your body that time to recover. It's so vitally important people really don't realize the importance of sleep and their well-being. So give us give us one tip that we could all use today. I mean, just because I need nine hours doesn't mean I get it. <laughs> I know what I need, but then the reality is always a little different. But give us, give us one top tip that we could actually try. So one is to develop a sleep routine. So many of us don't, I don't have a sleep routine, I have to be honest, although I pretty much can get in those number of hours, but is to develop a sleep routine so that you know, let's say you generally go to sleep at 11 for argument's sake. Well, maybe you start your sleep routine at 10. Maybe, you know, if, if you shower before you go to bed, you do that an hour beforehand and you put on your night clothes. Um, you start to wind down what you're watching on television. Um, you know, it, um, if you have any uh, lights in your room that, that are blue lights, it's best to, to turn those off or turn them away from you because that tends to keep us up and interrupt our sleep patterns. Um, so that would be the TV screen, the computer screen, the phone screen, that kind of stuff, right? Correct, and yeah. your phone, and, yeah. and actually your phone because how many people are on their phone scrolling you know, until, until they're ready to shut their eyes? So that's, um, right? And so, and here's, um, here's another one, is to even make three gratitude statements or three positive statements before you actually close your eyes. Even three things that happen during your day, three things you're thankful for, um, that will kind of put positive imagery in your brain um, so that you don't have that negative stuff, that negative tape going on in your brain, because we all have negative tapes that are really running, you know, in the background, almost like in a computer background, 90% of our thoughts are negative. So if you can kind of change that paradigm 
and make some gratitude statements or write them down in a journal. This can help also develop a sense of calm and, and um, positive imagery that will help you fall asleep and, um, and close your eyes and go to sleep, right? You make so, that your time. So all of these sound to me like good habits and everything that you're talking about, we, I don't want to say we've been living a long time, but we have. I mean, I have 60 years of habits behind me, right? It's not like I can change. I mean, I could, I guess, on a dime, but will I? So how do you, in your strategies and in your work, how do you address what I've always been doing versus what's actually good for me to do going forward? Well, that's a great question because it does have to do with habits and changing a habit is not easy. It actually takes a very long period of time. So we go through finding out, well, what triggers you to do the things that, that you're doing and what reward are you getting from that? Is there a benefit to that? And we analyze that and figure out what small changes we can make in that, in that situation, in that habit, let's say, to kind of alter it just slightly, pair it with something else so that the reward, the cue for that is different than the cue for what you're using, what's happening now. So when you say reward- about, it's, Excuse me, it's all about conditioning actually. It's really all based on Skinnerian or operant conditioning, which goes back to whatever year, right? We're all, they're conditioned responses, right? So, so we have some of them from childhood, some of them from mid adulthood, some of them could be from yesterday. But overall, you're, when you say reward, do you mean like the bowl of ice cream or do you mean better sleep? Does it matter? Yeah, so the reward, obviously, well, what is the reward you're getting for not having a good night's sleep? That would be an interesting thing. Yeah. Um, is there something that you're gaining from that? I don't know. I don't know what that would be. That's something that we, we go into, right? Is there, a reward? is there a reward for that? I don't really know. Maybe there is for you. For is that a positive reward? Because negative reinforcement sometimes is just as important as positive reinforcement. And I bet it's often more powerful, isn't it? It is yeah. much more powerful. So we want to get that positive reinforcement going because clearly if you get a night's sleep that's restful, you'll wake up feeling probably more positive, rejuvenated, more rested, and have better focus for your day moving forward, whatever you're doing in your day. Absolutely. And while it's great, while that's great information for absolutely everyone, I mean, from 15 to 95 and beyond, but for us in our community and, you know, your point about the importance of community and connection, certainly in our Laguna Woods Village community, that's something that we actually have in abundance is community, which is, which is super. And I, I always joked in the beginning, pre-COVID, it was the only place I'd ever seen that could get hundreds of people to an 8 a.m. yoga class. And everybody started their day with that positive spirit. And now that we're coming back out into a full life, and the idea is to continue it even fuller, because as you pointed out, COVID really wasn't a friend in that way, in the isolation way. Co correct. And um, yeah, it's wonderful that people in that community have that. Yeah. And so we, we're looking to grow it. And I know you have many strategies, so many years of experience. I mean, my goodness, 50,000 hours, 40,000 hours, doesn't matter if it's 50 or 40. Right. I mean, Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 hours makes you an expert. So at this right. point, I'm not quite sure what we would even call you, but I want our people to be able to find you. So where can they find you? So people can email me at phyllis p-h-y-l-l-i-s at phyllis amen my last name a-y-m-a-n associates.com and my website is just that www.phyllisamenassociates.com and so they could reach out to me either through the website or email me directly i'd love to have a conversation with people and and even if they just want to have a like a 20 minute or 30 minute consultation find out where they're at just kind of get an overview uh so i could give them maybe a tip or two i'd be happy to talk to anybody about that or you know sometimes people know so i actually 
uh, have a client now that was referred to me through someone else. Um, so people may know people who who need something could use, like that. could use your information that's yeah. a very generous offer and thank you and we will put your contact information on the screen so everyone will find it and also in our blog post on the website for gooddayorangecounty.com so awesome. we'll give them every opportunity to reach you phyllis thank you so much for joining us today great information and i look forward to talking to you again thank you so much lauren it's really been fantastic Thank you, and we'll be right back.